This week's episode of Awesome Cast is brought to you by Drobo, the lovely people who will make sure that your data is safe at all times. Go ahead and check it out at awesomecast.com. Click on the Drobo link on the right-hand side to learn more. Hey guys, it's the awesome cast number 72. We're back again. We got, we're not doing any weird hangout thing. We got, we got, we're back to normal ish, except I'm here and Chachi's there, but that's okay. Um, this is the awesome cast. I'm Sorg right here at Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. And with me back again, Rob De La Creta. Hey. And it's nice neutral setting. That's why we're not, not doing neutral. anything weird because <laughs> Rob's back. Yes. Oh, okay. We put the weirdness away. I keep you. the I keep the lid on Chachi is what happened. What is my hair doing? I've got like a calic in the front. I just looked at that. It's like <laughs> uh, Yeah, I'm back because uh because I'm not doing crazy things. I actually uh was doing the same sort of crazy thing I was doing last week. I'm uh hang on. <coughs> oh jeez. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, this is a classy uh, episode, obviously. Uh I'm in the middle of doing a lot of very technical, um, difficult things at the Carnegie Museum of Art. For, uh, for an exhibit that's going to be opening up, but um, it's a lot of hard work, and it beat the crap out of me last week, so I, I couldn't be here last week. But this week, I uh, I did a lot of that, but I did it early, so now I'm still really tired, but I'm at home. <laughs> and you're going to go straight to sleep directly after the show. Yeah, probably. I'm just going to pass right out. All right, on the couch, the uh, the the leader at of his Chachi Nation at Chachi Says dot net. That's right. I am the leader. Bow before me. Whoa. Bow. I bet Whoa. you don't take a week off from Chachi says dot net. Are we kneeling before Zod? I do. I'm gonna throw you in a window and send you off into another dimension. Sweet. I, I take weeks off all the time. That's right. I'm taking two off right now. You're taking two <laughs> weeks off? Yeah, I didn't do any posts last week. Oh yeah. And I'm not doing any this week. It's like hey, I'm doing I'm on a vacation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, the, you don't understand. The last vacation I took was injury based. Yeah, yeah. This has nothing to do with injury. I'm just... Where are you going? I'm going to the Comic-Con. The Comic-Con. Yes. New York Comic-Con. And we're going to make Chachi do stuff. Uh, and also, rejoining us from his new digs. Check out those drawers behind him. Yes. Digging it. My you have wonderful so, drawers. so many places to put things. So many, so many places. <laughs> things. Hi. AJ's back. How you doing, I sir? Am, I am back. These are my things. They're behind that. <laughs> Let me show you that. <laughs> Tremendous. Uh, this is Awesome Cast. If you stumbled across us, we're over at awesomecast.com. You can join us every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Every Tuesday night, Chachi, at, at, at 7 p.m. <laughs> Eastern at live.sorgatronmedia.com. You can also email us, as some fine people have, at contact at awesomecast.com. 724 cast 724 Two five two 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 seven eight, and uh, hey, we're on the Twitters as well. I'm doing this, guys. For the rest you're of gonna the show. just do that to the rest of the show. Yep. That naughty gesture off camera for yep. the rest of the show. For the rest of the show, <sighs> you're gonna hurt after a while. Point, your, your finger is gonna be pointing you know, at you. Okay. Yes, pointing. Uh, we're also available on iTunes, MediaFly, Roku, Blip TV, YouTube, Stitcher, and a whole crap load of other places. I suppose. Also, we are on the Twitters at. Awesome cast. You already said that. Did I say the Twitters? You did. Well, yep. say it again. Well, I'm re-emphasizing the Twitters, the Facebooks, the, well, not really on Google Plus yet, but we are, if you follow me, we kind of ask questions. Um, like this one. Hey, guys, Netflix is going crazy this week. Sure <laughs> has. Tell us more. <laughs> so we put out, uh, after hearing all all the hubbub yesterday, uh, over on, uh, you know, the, the Netflix uh ditching quickster nothing's gonna change we're back to normal everything is okay Reed hastings might be crazy um i put out is the netflix backtrack shaking your faith in your subscription with them uh so i actually got responses from twitter facebook and google plus oh wow that is called fan interaction and it's tremendous uh let's see uh sonic screwdriver joins us at tom right no he's Wait, yes. no, he is at Tom Bobbitt. Yes. Um, he uh, <laughs> can a company called Do Over, like in kickball. Uh, Riz asks, uh, I would have liked to pay less for just streaming, but meh, companies run better than Netflix. The entire hashtag search. 
Okay. Yeah, did you I guys see that? The I company's that run out. better than Netflix, and then it was just fake company after fake company that has run better than Netflix, like <laughs> Vandalay Industries and Hey, uh, I said um Enron and Adelphia. Yeah, Enron, Adelphia. <laughs> Chachi's watching the, the cafe. The, for the record, the cafe is closed right now, and there is nobody in <laughs> yes, there. Yes, we have a cafe cam at cafesolstice.net. So there is no one. Up. There is no one in there. Well, prime time to rob. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been robbed before. That's why we have a camera now. I um, steal some bacon. Yeah, yeah, and they stole bacon and quarters, but not the iPhone. Uh, Beth joined us on. Joined us on Facebook joined and had a it. big write up. Joined it. Uh, what the hell is wrong with the company that makes such a fleeting decision so quickly and seemingly without any kind of market research? Are they going under and in denial? Are uh, these the last ditch efforts to save whatever? I know there are uh, options to watching movies. I have Amazon Prime account. I have yet to stream content from Amazon because they don't have a player that works on my iPad. I'm lazy like that. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm confused and upset. I had high hopes for them. I've been a subscriber for many, many years. I thought Netflix loved me, and then it goes and treats me like this. So well, they did well, send everybody that letter that's that, with the apology. They and did. Then they, they did. They, at, yeah. least, at least they talked to you and, and sent I you got a love letter, letter and flowers. You got another letter, Chachi? Yeah. What's that? From Netflix. Like, since yesterday? Yeah. What'd you get? Really? Hold on. Let me bring it up. You got an e-letter. Man, the internet is amazing. You've got mail. And while he's bringing that up, I got one from Chris Brogan over on Google+. Plus. Didn't unsubscribe, but they seem pretty messed up when on the ropes from the outside based on the reversal. So, oh, hey, I got an email, too. We, did we all just get emails? Is this breaking news? No, no, I got it a day ago. I just didn't pay attention to it. Uh, <laughs> dear Rob, it is clear that for many of our members, two websites would make things more difficult. So we're going to no keep Netflix kidding. as one place to go for streaming and DVDs. This means no change, one website, one account, one password. In other words, no quickster. While the July price change was necessary... We are now done with price changes, and then we've added a bunch of crap, and we value you as a member, and we are committed to making Netflix the mo the best place to get your movies and TV shows. Respectfully, the Netflix team. Um, actually, I did. Um, I spoke with uh, my research group, uh, which involves my dog and my cat, and both of them thought it was, that was uh, Quickster was a terrible idea. Yeah, it's unbelievable. How do you how do you make the decision? As a company, mm. to say, hey, let's split off our entire core business into another company and think our customers are going to be like, you know what, Netflix, <laughs> you guys are crazy, but I'll go along with anything. You I, I feel like there's got to be some kind of backstory here. Like somebody was on vacation or something, and then they came <laughs> back and they're like, you did what? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Wait, we started a new company? Wait, huh? <laughs> Well, they, they, even the Quickster thing. I mean, we, we, how, do they still have the site up? How did they spell Quickster? Wasn't it really weird? Is it, oh, oh, yeah. They spelled it quick, the same way quick, Friendster quick spells stir, things. Quickster. It was Q-W-I-K-S-T-E-R. Q-W-I-K? -Q that's oh, like... Yeah. Oh, that's so bad. Oh, yeah. It was, so this bad. was a bad idea. Hold on. Let's see if their site's still up. It, it would be it horrible if their site's still up. It shows they're completely not paying attention to their online. Okay, it just redirects Netflix. But did you remember they, they had the, the curtains, and it was, it was just a horrible Photoshop job. Like, hey, intern, get this done. We have an announcement to make. We have a, the, the big boss man that has a letter and has this great idea called Quickster. And we didn't com completely didn't get the, uh, the Twitter or any other domains other than this. Like, uh, really... You couldn't maybe, tell maybe me like the like, CEO that's is like, a hasty decision. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, if you can't get the domain or a new – like the best domain you could come up with was quickster.com. You they didn't search even get GoDaddy right? hard enough and you couldn't have come up with a better name. That This tells me anything that, anything that has like a really bad name that even sounds stupid that is going to get lambasted on the internet. I mean you can usually tell like – Oh, hey, we're going to name this new company Quickster. How do you feel about it? Quickster? Sounds like Friendster. Friendster's lame. Get out of here. Mm -hmm. Like, that sounds to me like a hasty decision that was made like, uh, let's split off our core DVD business. Uh, let's see. Uh, Quick, Quickster? Quickster? That's a domain. I, got, I, can, get, I can buy it for like five bucks. It's Quickster? Got it. Yeah, let's do that. Announce it. Do you have something there, Rob? Sorry. I was just random banter underneath AJ. <laughs> oh, you're just giving them an assist. But no, uh, just with the assist. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm, I'm happy they didn't do it because that was a little weird. I hope we still get video game rattles because I'm kind of curious about that. Um, 
But I wonder if this, like, was there a game plan that this just completely screwed up? Nope. You don't think there's a game plan at all? None of the, uh, they're looking to maybe sell part of the streaming or the other part of it. One they're Tuesday looking to get... morning, the development team sat down in their conference room. Mm -hmm. They passed the ceremonial peace pipe. <laughs> <laughs> and they created the DVD service. Is there a little oh, bit of I don't think there, there was there peace well? involved, and I think it was more like crack, but <laughs> still. Piece of crack. Okay, you know, whatever. You know. Um, yeah, this is weird. This really kind of shakes. I mean, wait, you know, everybody's saying, you know, at the beginning of the year, they're like, oh, Netflix is going to be unbeatable. They can't screw it up. Oh, yeah, They just can. blatantly screwed it up. I mean, it's ridiculous. I think they wanted to prove to the investors of the world, like, you know what? Let's give this a shot. Yeah, exactly. And then they did it, and then everybody went, whoa, 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 mm -mm, mm -mm, don't do that, don't do that. And they're like, all right, you see, I mean, we can't screw this up. We're we're gonna do this right, but just so you know, we can we can screw this up in a heartbeat, quicker than heck up. Stop putting so much faith in our stock. Stop putting. Stop maybe putting faith maybe in you us. shouldn't put so you know maybe you shouldn't charge so much for putting content on our Netflix because we'll screw it up. And early is this is this the big is this like the only misstep they've made in all these years? Oh yeah, it feels like it. I mean, everything else has been deals and negotiations with like the uh, or which did you just wave at me? No, I was okay. looking at my hand. <laughs> She's just staring at your hand. Yeah, there's a new line on it. I wasn't sure. Oh what. look, it spells Quickster. Wow, it does. that's how I came up with it. Um, anyways, well, that, that's enough. I'm still on Netflix. I'm still doing the same thing. So we just kind of do a do over in the last month. It's like that a do episode of Doctor Who where that. That entire episode gets gets uh, erased because they went back in time and changed it. You want to know how much I use I use Netflix? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> you want to know how much I use Netflix? Uh, how much you use Netflix? So remember when I first started complaining because I like bought Netflix or whatever? I got like my month free and then I just let it go. Mm -hmm. So the only thing I watch on Netflix is the IT crowd. Okay. It's not a long endeavor. It's not a long endeavor at all. No. I just uh, just the other day. Watch the second episode of season three. Over that entire time, that is how much I've used Netflix. I mean, I I've, I get a I get a pretty good use out of it. I, I've been watching Wolverine and the X Men. I watch all the Avengers. I watch. I'm uh, starting to watch Caprica now that it's on there. I uh, watch the crap. Out I of think Netflix. I'm going to watch the Walking Dead again. Although, notice I'm saying TV shows. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, but well, I think that uh, you know the, the chat room is uh, all uh, having fun over here. Uh, talking about Netflix and 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 everybody's talking about how that it's Netflix. Juggle John points out that it is Netflix and that they want to drop the discs. Um, and uh, Sonic Screwdriver points out that uh, he thinks the Quickscore was an attempt to shield the brand from the backlash of the price jump. Um, hell of a swerve move, Netflix. Uh, if that was the case, yeah, because you rough. got people yeah. like. Wait a minute! I don't care that you jack my prices up. What are you doing to the DVDs over here? And everybody um, forgot that they jacked all the prices up. <laughs> wait, 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 wait! Wrestle fan, Wrestle fan pointed out. That, wait, I'll get to you, Chach. Uh, when you looked up Quickster on Twitter, the profile pic was Elmo smoking pot. Yeah, because Netflix never went out to get the Twitter That's, account. Somebody already owned Quickster, the Twitter account. That's tremendous. That's actually somebody's like personal Twitter account. <laughs> What's that, Josh? I, I just want to point out that in a previous episode, we stated that Netflix is in no hurry to drop the DVD portion because most people aren't up to yeah, where I think we are that's that's the thing that's the thing that's universal everybody can get it my dad can get it out of nowhere you know you, you, right. it, people still get i mean red box is a huge thing dvds are being used we don't need to spend a lot yeah, of time on no, this i right, just want no. to but I think point netflix, that out to, i think this is still part of netflix's ultimate plan is that they want to get out of the dvd shipping business because yes. it would cut imagine the cost you cut you cut postage costs, mm -hmm. shipping costs, of the actual getting the DVDs to your locations. Manpower. You have all of the random distribution centers all over the U.S. Mm -hmm. and wherever else Netflix is, uh, all, you know, all over the world. And then you get rid of all of the employment of the people sorting the DVDs and uh, you know packaging the you know throwing them in the envelope and sending them to you. They save all the money on the postage of the DVD being shipped back. I mean, those are significant costs, especially with the rising price of, or the you know it, the fluctuating. I don't want to say rising because it's been coming back down lately, but the fluctuating cost of fuel, and obviously the fluctuating costs of shipping, that you know kind of roll along with that with that you know the fuel costs. That you now get into this situation where 
if you can get out of the physical business, it's going to be beneficial to you. Mm -hmm. They could build a data center for a fraction of the cost that they're likely paying for shipping monthly. And they could throw up all of the streaming content. The problem is, is that they have to get the content from the round pieces of plastic into their data center because a lot of the stuff that they have that's on uh, DVD isn't necessarily in streaming form. In addition to the fact that they have to work out all the licensing deals with the studios and they have to convince people that uh, to, to upgrade their internet connectivity to do that. And, and sort of, like you said, your dad's not in a position to do that. No, the I'm entire not. state of Nebraska is not in a position Thank to do that. Thank you for bringing that up. Exactly, exactly. exactly. So, it's, it's the Nebraska clause. It's, it is the Nebraska clause, much like the, uh, the Michael J. Fox clause. Oh, speaking of Nebraska, um, everybody got really quiet. Well, well, we're waiting because you, you have us waiting. You dropped the bomb. What's wow. going we're on in Nebraska? I dropped the Nebraska. I don't. I don't want to promise anything, but uh, we we might we might get a live report from Nebraska in the next few weeks. Are you? Calling? Do you know you know somebody who's going to Nebraska? Uh, uh, a fan of ours might oh. be going to Nebraska. Tremendous. Uh, that, now, are they going to like Omaha or somewhere on a border with another state where internet may, in fact, leak across a river or two? <laughs> or are we talking like we're talking like middle of Nebraska. Well, I mean, as as we all know, Nebraska is in fact one giant cornfield, so uh, it's kind of hard to miss the cornfield. That's true. That's Probably true. the cornfield portion. I'm just gonna. If I had to place a bet, if you're going to throw something into the state of Nebraska, it's going to land in a cornfield. Yeah, it's likely. I mean, or it's going to hit Warren Buffett, either or. Yeah, you're going to land in a cornfield or on top of Warren Buffett. Someone someone actually said to me, they're like, oh, did you know that Nebraska has like the highest uh, income per capita? And I was like, yeah, there's five people in Nebraska, Warren Buffett and his kids. <laughs> I don't know how you want me to, you know, not reply to that. One more story from at Funky Dung. Gamers opt out will send printed EULA's uh, opt outs to game companies on your behalf. So, I mean, we are, you know, you know, you, you, you agree to that EULA when you break the shrink wrap, even though it is ridiculous usually, right? Uh, you know, this is a big problem with uh, stuff like, you know, StarCraft or anything else that connects online. You agree to all that stuff. So... So, so they're apparently this will this will actually send them to them. I, I don't know. Uh, you know, what do you guys think of that? By not agreeing to the end user license agreement, mm -hmm. doesn't that basically say that I can't use the software? Yeah, that you're not going to use the software. Mm -hmm. So pretty much, you're gonna you're gonna ask a company to send these companies letters saying that you don't agree to something that you bought, but you're going to use anyhow. Yes. This so you're basically like a telling idea. a company to send a letter to another company saying that you are committing a crime. <laughs> yeah. That's what I mean. I don't know a lot about this, but that's what I'm getting out of it. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I, well, I think it's it's more of a, a protest against this this practice because I mean, the you know what? No, stop. You know what I'm sick of? Protests. I am sick of people protesting. It's kind of oh, a big oh. thing these days. I know. Mm -hmm. I'm sick of it. There we go. Just shut oh, up. Are they still down there on Wall Street? Yes. Yeah, I, I heard that yeah. everybody took a cab home. Oh, Kanye. No, Kanye was down there. Oh, yeah. yeah Kanye was there. Down Russell Simmons Oh, was man. There. We're going to have to take a trip down to Wall Street and occupy some shit. I don't oh, want to occupy anything. Let the people go to work, all right? <laughs> They're generating revenue for the economy. Let them go. <laughs> okay, Rob. Somebody's buying churros down there. <laughs> What's wrong, Rob? I'm just letting it go. <laughs> moving on, moving on, moving <laughs> on to less uh, exciting. Um, so the iPhone, the iPhone uh, uh, announcement was last week. We already talked. about Wait, that. was it? Yeah, that was before the show. We already talked. But about Rob that. and AJ weren't here for that. No, no, we weren't. No, we already you talked weren't. About that. So we already talked about uh, that. He's, he's <laughs> already talked about that. Rob, what do you think about anything other than the iPhone 4s? I'm so confused. What does that even mean? <laughs> there are things other than the iPhone 4S. To no, talk apparently, about? no, absolutely not. You know what? I really like peat moss and Doritos. Yes, yeah, those are two you things know other than the iPhone making a, 4S. a Taco Bell hard taco out of Doritos. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. No, you just brought us the Taco Bell Dorito thing. 
yeah. you know what happened in between the iPhone 4S and this episode? Yes, sir. Oh man, do we have to pour one out right now? Well, we, oh, yeah, we do. that that oh, <laughs> we <laughs> lost a friend. We did. We, we did, did lose a friend. We, we we lost a pretty big friend. Mm-hmm. A, as a technology banter show, we lost one of the biggest friends that we we have. Yes, we did. Um, Mr. Steve Jobs died on Wednesday evening of cancer. Yep. At fifty six years old. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I'm in technology, and AJ works in technology. Yep. And you two are really big fans of technology. I work in technology. You work in technology. <laughs> Come on. No, you don't. Oh, look around. There's more technology in my studio than there is in your entire building. Come at me. That's a lie. <laughs> wow. <Are> we, <laughs> Whoa. That is, a, hey, hey, that hey. is Whoa. an outright lie. Save all the hate right now. We're talking, but, we're um, talking about a friend here. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, this is a guy that shaped our entire lives. Mm-hmm. I mean, the way we live, the, the hobbies that we have are... Partly because of him. Mm-hmm. And episode four, four or five of this show was us was Rob and I demonstrating FaceTime. Right. I mean, uh, yeah, we we spend a lot of time on this show talking about stuff that he is responsible for. He may not personally have created it, but he's the reason why they were there creating it. Yeah, yeah, he's the reason why we're not sitting here pounding away on a mainframe, hoping that video may happen. <laughs> yes, um, he, Steve Jobs. It, it, you know, I've been an Apple fan. You know what? I'll say it. I've been an Apple fanboy for a very, very long time. I'm talking like ninety five, ninety seven, during the Gil Emilio era, the Vince or the John Scully era, when Apple made. Well, they made they made crap. Um, they made big beige pieces of crap. Um, Power PC was great for a while, um, and it took somebody like Steve Jobs to come back to that company uh, and bring the next operating system. And it, you know, everybody talks about having vision for things. And now, because of uh, you know where we are as as, as an industry and as a uh, um, you know where we are as a as a as a, a tech industry in general and, and, and technology fans. We always look for you know for home runs on the first on the first go. Um, and I don't know how many of you have actually used the very first version of OS ten ten dot zero, mm-hmm. um, which was that was a brave jump. Um, I had a lot of. Uh, Cat. 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 Yeah. Cat. The, uh, <laughs> I mean, version uh, version 10.0 was really bad. Uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was pretty awful. It was it was not very good. Nothing ran. Uh, the classic emulation mode uh, barely ran. Uh, and a lot of people were kind of starting to look at Apple and going, hey, Steve, you had a good one with the iMac. That was really cool. Um and now you got this new OS, and it doesn't seem to be doing so hot. Come on, Steve, what do you got for us? And uh, he took that 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 criticism to heart, and ten one, which basically fixed every single problem that ten had, he brought it out as a free upgrade. That's like going from Snow Leopard to Lion, F R E E free. Um, and then ten dot two came out, and it was even better. And there was this vision of. We're going to go from where we are now with this, you know, with OS 9, which was nothing more than a skin on top of OS 8, which was nothing more than a skin on top of OS 7. And they brought it back up to a legitimate OS. And they put in things like, you know, Spotlight. You put in things like, uh, you know, the dock, which while it kind of sort of, felt the same as the start menu. There were they made changes to it as it went along with things like stacks and you know the context menus. Um, I know when you go into if you right click on something in the Windows uh, you know start menu or the Windows taskbar now, you can get context like uh, play or next track or that's something like that. Um, 
but they, you know, Apple really had that before that. And Steve and, and the designers at Apple have always had this idea of making things better and making things easier and not trying to make things more complex than they needed to be. Um, and, and that's one of the things that Steve imparted uh, towards the end uh, to a lot of the people who are at Apple. Um, a lot of people forget that Apple has possibly the best executive and, and, and management team of any company in the world. Um, you know, everybody talks about, you know, this, the design stuff. Most of it isn't Steve. That's Jonathan Ive and, and his team. They talk about the iPhone. That's Scott Forstall and his team. They talk about, uh, the, the, you know, they talk about OS 10, which is Bertrand, which was Bertrand Soleil and, uh, has now been passed on to, uh, Greg Joswiak, I think. You know, these are guys that have been bred in the Apple system. They know to expect perfection. They know to, that if you're going to, you know, bring this up, that if you're going to, uh, if you're going to bring something to the table, it's got to be awesome. It's got to be top notch and you cannot come with anything less than that. Um, and, and this this kind of delves into the iPhone 4S and everybody talking about how it was kind of a failure. This wasn't what people were looking for. Um, I, I think the iPhone 4S represents what they want to do. Um, this was clearly a bump, but I don't think people, I think a lot of people forgot what happened with the iPhone 3GS, which was a bump over the 3G. And the 3GS is still sitting being given away now on contract from AT&T two years later. Um, I had a 3GS that I just sold on eBay for $200 because somebody wanted it. Um, that's the type of thing that Apple is now into. And I think that they've now hit that. They, they, you know, they've now reached the point where they're now able to make business plans based off of the iPhone. And they're not just putting in features to keep up with competition or to stay ahead of the competition. They're not coming up with a business plan. They say, all right, hey, guess what? Uh, this is an off year. We're going to come out with an S model, and it's going to have a processor bump. We're going to put some cool features into it that's going to take advantage of this. Uh, I, don't think every, I don't think anybody remembers the 3GS was the one that had video recording. The 3G mm -hmm. didn't get video recording mm -hmm. uh, unless you jailbroke. And voice uh, and uh, uh, voice voice was uh, dialing was a big thing with it. Mm -hmm. was it voice was dialing it? came in with the 3GS as well. Mm -hmm. um, the, I, I don't think that people realize that Apple doesn't have to hit home runs anymore. Uh, I just saw a stat today: eighteen point eight million iPhone 3GS users are scheduled to upgrade this year. Eighteen point eight million. I don't. I, I don't think. I think people and analysts forget these sorts of things. They expect people to want to upgrade to the latest and greatest. Like I went from the three GS to the four um, because I liked the four. I loved the design. I wanted to do it. And AT and T offered me a sweetheart upgrade deal. And um, if it wasn't for my uh, broken lock button on my four, I wouldn't be upgrading to the four S right now because I have a four and I really like it. And there's not much to it. And then I saw the benchmarks come out that says the iPhone 4S is 70% faster all the way around. Processing, gra or it's seven times faster with graphics. That's actually been thrown in benchmarks. Uh, the web processing is almost twice as fast. It's, it's just, this is the sort of stuff that Apple is now into, is that they can get into doing full-blown just internal upgrades and throwing in a feature like Siri to get people to want to upgrade and I don't know if you guys have seen any of the uh, uh, demo videos of Siri, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, but like you can ask it if you like you could say Siri, I love you, and it says, <laughs> "Do you talk to the other mobile phones that way?" Like this is the sort of stuff that Apple is into. They don't need to put a four-inch screen and LTE in the phone to sell a million of them. And, 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 and yeah, and it's just insane when you really think about the rest of the industry and analysts and numbers and 
gadget blogs that are like, there's no foreign screen, there's no LTE, flop. Yeah, you know, I, I've, I've heard so much and, le- and learned so much, you know, even more about Steve Jobs, like from all the people talking about him, stories I haven't heard. Um, you know, the, the, the fact that, you know, he... he because he took a uh, what was it a typography class or, or something okay. that uh that's why things are pretty on a Mac you yeah. know because he, he took that's, special care to that you know otherwise it would be DOS you yeah. everybody remembers DOS that's why the fonts know. are pretty that's exactly right you know there's a little more style to it to the and Windows feels clunky by by comparison mm-hmm. uh, you know to the point where it's now he's mm-hmm. made computing accessible to everybody with uh, stuff like iPad and everything. Um, and, and yeah, they're, they're ahead. You're not going to see giant, crazy upgrades to these devices because they're ahead. Let me you know, just, everybody uh, says, everybody says they're getting caught catching up to Android, but really in, in the comparison, I don't think, I don't think Android. No, you know, as an Android user, they're not catching up to crap. Mm-hmm. They release one phone a year. You know, when how many- you, when you release one phone a year, mm-hmm. of course you're going to have to add things that have been added when the other competition is coming up with phones once every three months. Oops, sorry. Yeah, I, I think when I, I think the difference here though and is that and they Apple do it comes right. out with one phone a year and it sells like ten million of them. Yeah, they do it right. Correct. Like when when all right, let's take uh any Android producing company. Alright? They're releasing phones once every six months. Four months. Sometimes more. Yeah, yeah, more than that. Sometimes quarterly, I think. And, sure. Like we said last week, it was the title name of the episode last week. Mm-hmm. It's nice, but it does this weird thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's because Apple releases one phone a year, one phone a year and figures out how to do it without that weird thing happening. Gets it right, keeps it keeps it under wraps. They only they only have to support one model. It's it, it again a Windows versus Mac uh, ideal of right. everything. Um, Hold on, before we move on, yes, can you? And you'll have to look for it. But my favorite uh, Steve Jobs tribute is the one from Pixar. Yeah, the one of the three of uh, uh, Steve Jobs in the middle of the movie theater. No, not that one. Uh, I'm looking, um, I actually haven't seen this yet. They released a new one of all of the main Pixar characters wearing black turtlenecks. Oh, is it a is this video or no? Or? It's just a, a picture. Okay. I'll see if I can. Now, now this is this has been a good one too. Uh, for you on the video, uh, you know, if you're not on video, oh, yeah. I apologize. But the uh, the Apple logo with the silhouette of his face in there, um, and uh, th- this is the one that's been going around a, a good bit. Uh, but I'll see if I can find that one for you, Josh. I'm looking for it right now. All right. Uh, Rob, do you have any thoughts on all this? Uh, <laughs> there's a lot to it. Um, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, feed some discussional fire here. Because if you sure. – uh, so popular opinion, as is my opinion, sure. Uh, you know, we lost a great man in this. Um, but also, if you uh, if you dig through the, the comment threads, you'll find the occasional person, including Gizmodo, oh Gizmodo and Gawker Media, how you dig yourself so so many fantastically dark holes. <laughs> uh, they published uh, an article about how um, how Steve Jobs was a horrible person, and uh, and how he treated workers incorrectly, and how all of the people who worked at Apple hated him, uh, and that he shouldn't be put up on a pedestal. And then there's all the people in the comment threads who say, um, somebody said, Richard Stallman said, I heard this. I didn't read this. I heard this. So so I don't have footnotes on this. But apparently Richard Stallman, all of you know who Richard Stallman is, yes? Uh, for those unaware that might be listening? Uh, one of the founders of the open source movement. Okay. Yeah, that's um, it. And overall. The, uh, GNU license, you'll probably find Stallman's name. Uh, <laughs> Richard Stallman. Uh, fantastic man that he is said uh, it's a good thing that Steve Jobs died yeah how about them apples uh, so uh, let's do you want the full quote on that one Rob yes please if you have it um, I'm, I'm still paraphrasing he said he is not happy that Steve Jobs is dead because he doesn't wish death on people um, but he is glad that Steve Jobs is gone um, from Apple because he feels that um iPhone and iPad and Mac users are imprisoned um, with the lack of choice uh, that they get from their devices. 
uh, that they get Apple's way, and, and that is the only way. Mm-hmm. Um, to which uh, somebody who writes for the unofficial Apple weblog, T-U-A-W, uh, basically came back and said, uh, no, we're not in prison. Imprisonment would mean we have no choice at all. We can go buy a computer with Windows. We can go buy a computer and install Linux, no problem. In fact, you can do it on a Mac. Um, but they said the it's it's the, the same general idea, and I, 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 I actually saved it somewhere. Hold on. Um, but he said this, it's the same general idea as somebody who uh, you know could go live in the woods, and they could go forage for food. Mm-hmm. Um, and they could do all of this. Uh, it was Chris Rossin from uh, the unofficial Apple Weblog. If they, um, if they, if they want, if you guys actually want to see it, uh, but it is Stallman compared iOS and OS 10 to jails. Yeah. So, um, and basically, this guy came back and said, "Hey, uh, it's not a jail. We have the choice, and we choose to live in this quote unquote imprisoned world." The same way that I choose to pay my taxes so I don't have to personally pave the road in front of my house. Mm-hmm. I choose to live in a nice neighborhood, which may have higher taxes because I want my kids to go to I want my kids to go to a good school. I choose to do these sorts of things. Could I go and live in the forest and forage for my own food? Yes. I happen to live in a very nice area and drive to a grocery store so I don't have to spend my entire day looking for food and I can enjoy electricity. Um, that, I mean, that's basically what it is. And, and Richard Stallman, while he has, while he's trying to make a point, he said something shocking to make a point, which is effectively how people make points now. Um, but he basically said, like, I'm glad that Steve Jobs is gone uh, yeah. because I want Apple to, you know, let their users free, um, which I think is silly all the way around for the various yeah. reasons that Chris mm-hmm. Rossum uh, uh, from that website. Yeah, exactly. I, I feel like I mean, like there is a point there um, that I like. I'm sure somewhere inside Stallman's head, which is usually a pretty smart head, but not at this very moment. Um, there, there is a nugget of of usefulness, which is something that a lot of other people has brought up, have brought up, um, which is like you know, it's never great when anybody dies. But as far as removing a figurehead from an uh, uh, an establishment, if we want to call Apple an establishment will bring along change. Um, So as much as Steve Jobs has been removed from Apple, uh, the Apple ideas and ethics uh, are based around a lot of what Steve Jobs had felt. And now that Steve Jobs isn't around anymore, that means that that is going to change. Change isn't always a good thing, but change does always open the doors for opportunity and competition. So as a result of Steve Jobs' death, interesting things are bound to happen. Maybe horrible things, but certainly this will accelerate a good or bad change in technology as a whole. I, I think that the, the, the change uh, would be, uh, to me, it seems like it's going to be limited. Um, there's a the possibility to things opening up, um, but I think that the people who are at Apple right now, especially his management team, have basically had it drilled into their heads that um, we are Apple, um, and our idea is to set the tone for what we do on our devices and what we do with our operating system, what we do with our computers that we build. Um, if users want to um, do something else, they can, but they're not going to do it with our hardware. Mm-hmm. Uh, as we've seen with the jailbreaking community, I mean, they've found multiple holes to get in, but it's I'll tell you this right now. iOS 4 was a tough nugget to crack. Um, it, 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 had a, it, it was locked down a lot harder than a lot of the previous versions were. Um, and the, I, I'm interested to see um, if Apple maintains uh, the course. And I think they will. I think somebody like Tim Cook, who has been... Uh, not been given the praise that he deserves for building Apple's supply line dominance, um, basically shutting down the entire East Asia market for flash memory, uh, shutting down the entire East Asia market for high density displays. I mean, he, it's kind of absurd what Apple did. If you really 
dig into their supply chain. Uh, and that was Tim Cook all the way through and through. That was not Steve. That was Tim. Um, and Tim, I think, has a lot to do with the financial benefits uh, less than Steve does from a figurehead and, and, and a design and, and a directional thing. But I think a lot of the people who work under him or who worked under Steve and now work under Tim are going to see, are going to push this forward. Um, but I'm interested to see, give it like a year or two down the line. Um, I'd like to see comparisons between Apple two years down the line and Google after Eric Schmidt took over. Yeah. Um, when the founder and, and, and visionaries for the company step to step to the side somehow, some way, and a outside or, or, or a third party source came in and, and tried to drive the company. Uh, you saw Eric Schmidt with, uh, with, with, with uh, uh, Google really pushing the commercial uh, aspect of it and really trying to build products out that, that made money versus Google, uh, the, you know, Serge, uh, Sergey Brin and Larry Page, who, for lack of a better term, just wanted to build things that were cool. I wanted to do things that were neat, and if they made money, that was great too. I, I, um, I don't I don't know if you disagree agree or disagree with this, but Sonic Screwdriver in the chat room says Steve was Walt Disney and Tim was Roy Disney. Yes, I think that would be a far. I think that's a very accurate analogy. Um, now, was Roy the one that took over when? Uh, there's been a lot of comparisons to Walt Disney as far as Steve Jobs it was the guy. He was the visionary. He was the guy, the idea guy, the the inspiration for for everything that everything was built on. Uh, but but um, was it under Roy that Disney like almost went under? Um, Roy Disney, um, who actually died four years ago, uh, he he definitely was. Uh, he disagreed with corporate decisions. Okay, I think he tried to be Walt. Um. And uh, I, I think that's the I think that's the big thing is that I don't think Steve or I don't think Tim Cook will uh, try to be Steve Jobs mm -hmm. it, as we even saw during the keynote. That's it's not his style. Everything he said, everything he did on stage was very subtle, very. I don't want to say this in a bad way, but it almost seemed like a like a like a quarterly conference call, and he's just yeah. knocking out the financials. And, and as it was, it was it was low key. It was on campus. It wasn't a big to do at the what the convention center they're usually at. Uh, yeah, the um, Yerba, the, either the Urban Winter Center for the Arts or the Moscow or Mos Moscone. Moscone Center, yeah. um, which actually are next door to each other. Um, but I, I think the big deal there is that Tim. Uh, has people like Scott Forstall. So when they do an iPhone announcement, Scott Forstall is going to do the heavy lifting. Yeah. Because Scott Forstall has that same like excitement that he kind of passes to that he that Steve Jobs generally had in his, in his keynotes. Uh, he's going to pass to Phil Schiller, who Steve Sch Phil Schiller is like the the dopey uncle of the bunch, but still he's been there long enough. He still has that same enthusiasm, and he's still kind of goofy, and he's still going to kind of get that. Like, you know, that excitement out there for the announcements of products. Tim Cook's going to be the guy running the ship. He's going to drive the ship, but he's going to let everybody else do the heavy lifting. Um, and I, I find that really interesting that, you know, that, that he's kind of delegating a bit more. And you saw it towards the end with Steve, too, that Scott Forstall would come up and do the long-winded iPhone or iOS announcements. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been and a lot. Steve would kind of take a take a break. And there's been a lot of talk that is there's been a kind of a training process, I guess you could say, uh, with 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 Apple. Um, so uh, you know, it's it's not going to change for a while, I don't think. Um, but um, I've also, uh, as a side note, I started reading uh, the Macintosh way. Guy Kawasaki, he actually mm -hmm. ironically uh, start put up the uh, the PDF for free when he got the rights back. Um, so I, I've been reading that and, uh, it, it, it kind of lends to what everybody says about his work ethic and what he expected of other people. Um, but it was some, sometimes, you know, to, 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 to put out something fantastic like that, you know, you have to have a hellacious work ethic and the people that, that are down on that are the people that don't want to work as hard or don't have the vision. 
Yeah, I, I, I think you can see that with a lot of businesses. Mm-hmm. Um, the people who are really passionate about what they do and, and are willing to put in the hours and are willing to put in the time and the work always see something out of it. Um, you know, it goes back to the common phrase, you get out what you put in. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you put in a lot, you get out a lot. Uh, and I think there are a lot of people now who are kind of skating uh, and, and have had some varying success at that. Um, I, I'm interested to see what Google and Android do now with this and how Apple responds to Windows 8. Mm-hmm. Um, because Windows 8, and I've, I've played with the developer preview, it's neat. Um, Even 7 yeah. was a step in a tremendous step in the right direction. I'm running Windows 7 right now. Yeah. I actually dump my Hackintosh. Yeah. Um, because I had so many problems with it, mostly because I have an AMD processor in my bo- uh, in my in my in my PC here, so it, that just lends to it. But I, I it, it well, seven just works. It was a simple install and all that other stuff, and so was eight. Um, eight installed cleanly in a VM on my machine, like that. Like I didn't even have to try. I I threw the ISO at it. I said install. And like 20 minutes later, I had a working Windows 8 box. Um, and I'm, I, I'm kind of intrigued by Microsoft having a, a, a unified interface across all of their devices, PC, tablet, phone. Uh, I'm interested to see how they are able to get into the game uh, now that they have uh, Windows, uh, Windows Phone 7.5 uh, Mango uh, out there that's now starting to get installed. I... I almost had another round of put my money where my mouth is uh, with a Windows phone. And then uh, my lock button broke on my iPhone 4 and I had to go buy a new one. So um, I almost played a really long game of put my money where my mouth is. uh, But I decided against that because uh, AT&T offered me another sweetheart deal. Um, But yeah, I, I, I think that. Steve was Steve's definitely the, the drive, and hopefully the, the, a lot of his values have still been instilled in uh, in Apple, and and hopefully they continue to do what they do best, which is uh, make great products that we all love and use. Mm-hmm. They can they can hand to my grandma, and, and she uses it, and it's great. Um, speaking of which, you know, iOS five comes out. Well, as of this recording, you might already have it, but uh, this is Tuesday. It comes out Wednesday. Uh, comes out tomorrow. Comes out tomorrow. Uh, Today, when you're listening to this, <laughs> you hopefully, might be, Sorg. You might be downloading it right now. You might be listening to us on iOS 5 for all we know. Yeah. Um, hey, how awesome is iOS 5? Do that thing where you slide it down from the top. <laughs> how cool is that? Oh, that thing that everybody th- says they stole from Android. Oh. 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 That, thing, so no. that thing that I've been able to do since I bought a G1. Mine's better. <laughs> <laughs> It's way um, better. I, there, there are some things. Uh, 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 Rob, you've been using iOS five, and Sword, you've been using iOS five uh, since what beta two, I think. Uh, yeah. yeah, roughly. Yeah. Uh, so here are the things that I'd like to see because I haven't had enough. Because I, I, I wrote some things in the show notes, and these are the things that I'd like to see because we haven't. People haven't really dug into it that much. Uh, well, they have, but these are the things that probably won't work so hot or won't be interesting until it actually is out there and everybody has it. Mm. Uh, number one, newsstand. Yeah, completely disabled uh, in the versions we've had. Yep, complete. Well, it's there. You can tap on it. You can see the newsstand itself, but you can't go do anything with it. Yeah. Um, and you can't put it in a folder because it does that screen separating thing, which the folder already does. Really annoying. Um, yeah, you can't try putting it in a folder. It won't work. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm really interested to see what paper ma- what papers and magazines get on board, uh, how long they wait, how many of them s- mm and haw about it and say... And no announcements what? yet, I don't think. No, uh, nothing yet. Uh, I'm surprised that Apple didn't announce anything during the uh, the iPhone 4S announcement. But that was one of the things they, that uh, supposedly they held back a lot of the announcements because they knew what was coming. Uh, including Facebook, which was just released for iPad uh, yesterday. Yes, um, yes. Which is tremendous, by the way. I've been playing around with it. it I'm not mad at Facebook. <coughs> you know, it, it, it really just kind of works. Um, yeah, I, I'm interested to see uh, what goes into newsstand, how newsstand works. 
Hopefully the Post Gazette puts their stuff in there and stops sending free PDFs to everyone. Um, I told I I, sh- I sent that out on on I sent a tweet about that probably a couple weeks ago. Uh, if you get uh, uh, my my coworker gets the uh, the Sunday delivery and gets the online delivery seven days a week, it is an unsecured PDF. And you go to you just go to this link and ta da there it is newspaper layout full PDF of the entire paper. Holy crap. Yeah. No security, nothing at all. It is a straight PDF link. And if you change the date, you can go back four months. Good job, Post Gazette. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm interested to see who gets in there, when they get in there, how much it's going to be. Am I going to pay an arm and a leg? Is it going to make it cheaper because I'm not having something sent to my house? Uh, Man, how even, well it works? I'm interested to see there, that. There, there's hardly anything on. I'm looking at the site uh, for iOS 5. I, I hardly see anything about newsstands. It's yeah. I I thought this would be something they'd be making a bigger deal out of at this point. Yeah, I I thought there was too. Uh, I thought there would be too. This is this is a to me personally, newsstand's a game changer. Yeah, and right. Apple's not making a big deal out of it because whatever. Uh, I'm interested to see iMessage as a whole uh, mm-hmm. because my fiance has an iPhone, uh, my sister has an iPhone, my mom has an iPhone, but. The three of them do not have iOS 5, so I can't iMessage them. I still have to text them. Uh, interesting thing that came out that not many people picked up on. AT&T got rid of all of their text messaging plans except for the unlimited ones. Yeah, uh, a couple months ago. I, th- I think we might have mentioned it on the show. It, it's and, and I thought about that because I was like, oh, man, I'll totally downgrade my texting plan because I'm going to have iMessage. And most of the people I know have iPhones, so I'm not going to have to text <laughs> anybody. This is going to be sweet. What do you mean I can't drop my text plan? I don't want to pay forever money for text messaging. <laughs> forever. No, money. I don't want to pay that. Mm-mm, not 20 cents a text message, which should be free. Mm-hmm. Um, also, so I'm, also I'm interested they're, to they're, see how many people drop their text messaging plans and say, screw it, I'll just pay individually and also, hope it's up to 20 bucks. I heard rumors AT&T is trying to talk them into uh, having a 4G icon on the uh, I- iOS 5 or on the iPhone That is 4S. a class action lawsuit waiting to happen. Is it? Is you think so? Now, oh, no, why now, 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 you know, to explain, they have HSD, uh, SHP, help me out. HSDPA. Thank you. Uh, plus, which is the same as what uh, Chachi has on his G2 that is considered 4G. Is that right? Yeah. Well, it's it's what I like to call 4G. Phone because yeah. um, oh, I mean, and they were very frank about it. Like, hey, look at all these phones calling themselves 4G, and they have the same technology and the same speeds. We're not going to do that because that's silly, right? Uh, and, and that's and, and I, I really like that Apple came out and said that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, that, that's that that's great, and, and and really, it has been completely ridiculous. Nobody technically has 4G. Oh, um, judging by I forget who. Uh, God, I'm going to bungle this up. There's a there's a standards body, uh, really? and I forget what their names are. Um, but they, uh, they came out and said 4G has to have a minimum of like 10 megs, 10, no, it's a hundred megabit down. I think, I mean, it's silly. Jeez. It is yes. way yes. up there. It is not. So even, like, the, uh, IMTA, the International Mobile Telecommunications Advanced. That's yeah. the organization that calls it. And they basically said like all the crap that everybody's coming out with not 4G. Sorry guys. This is 3G plus at best. Sorry, yep. mm-hmm. three and a half G. But AT and T is calling their stuff four G. Verizon's calling their stuff four G. Um, Sprint, T Mobile, Sprint's oh. calling their WiMAX stuff four G. And all of them don't even come close to the actual set download and upload speeds that have been set by this group to say that this is four G. Yeah, yeah. Um, I find that hilarious. So, uh, hey, I don't want to forget the Cards app because <laughs> it seemed. <laughs> really, really stupid. And then I thought about it. Uh, Single handedly uh, saves the postage industry, right? Well, one, it saves the postage industry. And two, it means that I can't be lazy. Well, it means I can be actually really lazy. I don't have to go to Hallmark anymore. Yeah. I don't have to go uh, stand there with all the cards. And be like, oh, no, I think we mentioned this last Maybe week, but uh, uh, America Greetings stock, as soon as that was announced in the keynote, <laughs> went down. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's too, like literally the cost for the cost of postage and the card is the <laughs> same or cheaper than your average card at Hallmark. And I'm like, I don't have to do crap now. I can just like take a picture, kind of save that one, and then go, oh, hey, it's my 
anniversary. It's oh, it's my fiance's birthday. Send. <laughs> cool. Like, <laughs> I don't have to think about things anymore. Thanks, Apple. Thanks, it's Steve. Just, His last gift to the world was making sure guys don't have to go to Hallmark anymore. It, it, it is so weird because it was like a uh, you know a, a marriage of the digital and the and the and the, and the analog. Uh, yeah. It was just like, and that was the first new thing we heard of when, yeah. in that keynote last week. Um, uh, I want to touch some other things. The camera is going to be pretty. I think the camera is going to be a really nice upgrade. Hopefully, uh, I'm looking forward to having a better camera on my phone. Again, coming through the 3GS, I've been waiting for this one for a long, yeah. long time. Uh, I'm well overdue with it. Um, I, I, the one thing I want to point out is a little known feature, and I, I've kind of been digging on it recently. The uh, autofocus and auto exposure locks. Mm -hmm. uh, if you tap and hold on something, it locks the focus and exposure on that point. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can recompose. So you can you can you know take the picture and not have to worry about it constantly refreshing the focus. Rob, we touched on that. We did a whole episode on this before. How many people are going to think they're photographers with this phone? <laughs> uh, the question is, how many people are actually going to use it? Not many. You think? You think? I mean, with the Flickr numbers and everything. I no. I mean, everybody oh, the actual... take pictures with it, but the amount of people that actually use the AE and the AF lock. I'm okay. So you're in like a low twenty percent. Okay. Okay. So we're yeah. still gonna have horrible, fuzzy, junky pictures on Flickr, even though it's oh, yeah. the first, it's the biggest numbers out there. Instagram made everyone. Instagram. Made everyone. <laughs> hey, you know, Instagram is about to come out for Android. Finally. Oh, oh cool. I can become There's a photographer. More people who are gonna send me stupid pictures with stupid filters. Yes. Awesome. Too bad, too bad, too bad, just about every camera I see on the Android sucks. Too bad I don't... I'm sorry. Too, I have not seen a good too camera. Too bad I don't send pictures. Oh, <laughs> uh, I did have an issue, and I don't know, I wanted to ask you two guys about this. Um, did, uh, have you guys ever tried using the camera button off of the lock screen? Uh, rarely. Yes, uh, I use I use it a good bit, uh, especially. You try it right uh, now. You know the greatest thing is is the taking the picture like right off the lock screen, and being able to automatically tweet a picture. That's You're how the I only person it. I know who uses that. I, I, I use, oh, I use, I use the, the hell out of it out at PodCamp, and I probably will the next few days at uh, Comic Con. Um, the, my issue though is that sometimes the pictures wouldn't save. Yeah, sometimes they disappear. I've that seen was a that. Weird. Yeah. I, I, and I'm just mad. I'm like, oh, I just took I'm a thinking, really awesome picture, and now it's not there anymore. I'm hoping it's a beta problem. I, I am. I'm thinking it's a beta problem too because I've had it do that, and I've also had it do where I would take a screenshot mm -hmm. or try to save something like out of the Facebook app, where you like press and hold and then save image. Mm -hmm. Just wouldn't save anything. Yeah, it's uh, uh kind of kind of stupid. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the stuff that I'm interested in seeing on uh, iOS five. Uh, hey, Sorg. Yeah. Facebook got an iPad app. Facebook got an iPad app and playing with Trashy. Pull up the Facebook app. Nope. No? Nope. We nope. have the cam and everything for Moving it. Moving on. Uh, uh, okay. Reading <laughs> He's reading the chat room. He's occupied. I am. Thank, thanks, uh, thanks, for being a, thanks for being a pal. Speaking of Facebook, mm -hmm. I have beef and not beef with Facebook. Okay. It's getting busy. Does it really feel like um, you're like stepping into a control panel of social media when you uh, jump into Facebook these days? Uh, no, and let me let me tell you why. I had a Facebook account. Keyword there is had. Mm -hmm. um, because I stopped I stopped uh, using Facebook because it annoyed me greatly because I had people from high school who I, I barely talked to when I was in high school. I My mom was on there, and I hated that, and people I didn't really like, and I never had the heart to unfriend people because uh, I'm – uh, I'm a nice person and I don't like that. So I just shut my tw I just shut my Facebook account off. I would literally just not look at it for months at a time. And I would look at it and be like, oh, hey, I've got like 50 friend requests from people I don't know. Cool, awesome. And uh, I, I stopped using it. So I deactivated the account, went about a year without using Facebook, which was nice. Uh, but the problem was is that people would say like, oh, you're not on Facebook. I can't send you this, this event invite. I'm like, oh. Fine, you can just tell me the details right now to my face because this is my face and you can tell things to it. Um, and I, I, I just kind of generally got annoyed with Facebook. And then uh, a lovely service called Turntable FM came out, uh, mm -hmm. which caused me to reconsider my thoughts because I really liked the idea of Turntable and I saw it in use. And I was like, oh, man, I want to do that. 
and I couldn't because I didn't have a Facebook account. I signed up for a uh, uh, an invite and never got one, and uh, so I, I continued to I continued to just sit on the outside and languish. And I was just going to be like, all right, cool. I'm just not going to use turntable because I'm not signing up for a Facebook account just for for the turntable. And then uh, iHeartRadio, the new one from uh, the nice people at uh, Clear Channel, uh, they came out and they said, we have and uh, we have a new version of iHeartRadio. You're going to be able to listen to all your regular stations that you've already done with iHeartRadio. But we have this Pandora thing, and it's way better than uh, Pandora. I was like, oh, well, this I'm interested in because uh, I like Pandora. So if you're going to say you're better than Pandora, I'd like to hear about this. Uh, and I went to sign up and I, I downloaded the new app and it worked. And I created a station and it said, hey, you need a Facebook account to do that. I'm like, why do I need a Facebook account? I just want to listen. Stupid clear channel. So I uh, went into my deactivated Twitter or Facebook account and reactivated. And then I realized that I was walking into a world of pain because I had a bunch of people that I hadn't replied to anything on. And everybody was like, oh, hey, you're back on Facebook, blah, 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 blah. And I didn't want to unfriend everybody because that's just mean. So I, de- I changed the email address, changed the name of that account, deactivated it again, opened a new one, and turned up the privacy settings to good luck finding me. I don't want to use you. Uh, and I only use it for authentication now. So, so you basically developed a, 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 a dummy account to get past yeah. all the, I'm going, you know, all the required logins, which is annoying because it is, you know, what if you're not into Facebook? Right. I'm yeah. not into Facebook. I don't like Facebook because there are too many stupid things like people. And this, this has nothing to do with Facebook as a service and everything to do with the people that I know. <laughs> and I'm sorry, people who know me who are listening to this, but I don't care that you have a picture of like 15 things and you tag me as this one because you think that's who I am. Oh, I hate uh, no. those. No, I thank you. Those. I'm out. I don't care that you tag me in this photo and then there's a 15 string comment thing and I'm getting a bazillion emails. Mm-hmm. No, thank you. I'm out. Well, like, these are the sorts of things that I don't like about Facebook. And it has nothing to do with Facebook as a service and everything to do with the people that I know. And I can't change them. And that bothers me. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Like I don't want like I I I I like the idea of Facebook. I love Google Plus because people don't tag me in stupid pictures and say, "Oh, hey, this is AJ. He's grumpy pants over here on the side." No, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care about your stupid picture because you think it's funny. I want to tag <laughs> AJ <laughs> in a picture laughing. on Facebook that says, "Hey, <laughs> this is AJ. He's grumpy pants over here on the side." <laughs> I kind of want to do that. The, now. The, the worst was like people that would tag me as for their like logo for their new new rap group or something. Well, yeah. I find it really funny that uh, I went into the privacy settings. The only way that you can find, I set it so that only friends can find me, and I have no friends on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And I set uh, the only people who can friend me are friends of friends, and I don't have any friends, so that's impossible as well. So I'm literally just trying to see how many people could possibly find me and then how many people I actually like it doesn't email me. I actually I think I turned off all the notifications on it too, so it doesn't even email me. Now how how long did that take knowing the privacy settings? Uh, about five minutes. About five minutes. Too hard. I mean it was, it was okay. um it took it took longer to change everything on the old account so that I wouldn't get anything from that. Mm-hmm. And then I can re-deactivate it and not feel and, 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 and use my regular email address uh, as 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 my login thing. Um, but yeah, I, I just I I, I want to see how many I wonder how many people use Facebook as an authentication system, and I wonder how many people are just too lazy. And uh, I think it's uh, a roadblock. I think people uh, get to what uh, Spotify that has it or you know whatever. Yes, there's a big uh, big to do about Spotify. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have a regular Spotify account because I signed up in England. Yeah. Me uh-uh. too. What? <laughs> so I have a regular one. Thanks. Dunsfold Aerodrome, a.k.a. Top Gear Test Drive for being my English address. Hey. Um, but yeah, I was, I was kind of surprised at how many uh, uh, sites require Facebook as an authentication thing and how many sites I wasn't able to use. And it annoyed me. So I made an authentication system myself. And I gave no information to it. The only thing that I gave to it was that my name is AJ and I am a guy. And that is it. 
Good luck selling my privacy information, Facebook. Excellent. Well, on that note, we got to wrap here today, guys. Uh, I think it was a good talk. Um, so, AJ, you're at virtualpotholes.wordpress.com. Yeah. Where you talk about... I talk about uh, cloud computing. Yes. That's what I talk about. I'm not very good at talking about cloud computing, and I don't blog very often. When I do, it's usually because I'm salty about something. Uh, yeah, the post that you're showing right now is uh, uh, from based on uh, Paul Maris' keynote. Uh, he's the CEO of VMware, uh, based on his uh, keynote, basically saying the under 35 crowd is going to take over the world. And I say, uh, no, we're not. <laughs> um, because all everybody who's in the under 35 crowd who got into the corporate world has to learn from all the people who are curmudgeonly old sysadmins uh, who don't want to do those sorts of things. And thus, they gain all of the same things. You go read it. It's far better to read it. And I had far more organized thoughts at the time. <laughs> That was like a month or two ago. So and Rob, he's all of his stuff is at robjdlc.com. Sure is. Sure is. <laughs> it's like the only thing I've said in the last 20 minutes. <laughs> hey, hey, how are you doing? I'm really sorry, yeah, Rob, but I had to talk. Oh, it's, well, it's, it's cool. I'm just hanging out, checking out what's happening on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Any final thoughts, Rob, going out? Uh, on this wacky, uh, wacky see, week let's... of news we've had? Uh, you can wrap it up here. Netflix still sucks. Uh, Apple cool. Steve Jobs shame. iPhone 4s uh, cool. iPhone 5 will be cooler. iOS 5 will be awesome. Siri is very cool. Um, uh, and uh, and yeah, I, I need a nap. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll let you go. You're a sleep deprived zombie right now. So. <laughs> Great, great time to do a show. Uh, oh, yeah. This works you out. Get some sleep, Rob. Get some sleep. Chachi, he's at chachisays.net, where he does chachi things. Like, he's on my Facebook right now doing things. Oh, am I doing things? He's going to be at the New York Comic Con doing chachi things in New York. Oh, you're not. You're going to do a send out here? No. You're going to say what's up to I, the people? I'm busy Check hacking. Check out my stuff? I am busy hacking your Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> it's not hacking if I'm already logged in. I am in your Facebook. Yes. Chatting with. Are you playing my with my words with friends or something? No. That's the cool part too. Is you can go in there and it has oh, the button for words up. with friends that goes right to my app. No. Nobody else thinks that's cool. Nope. No. Nope. Mm. Thanks, Josh. No one plays games on Facebook. My stuff's at sorgatron.com. I've been uh, I've been writing a few things. Stuff. I do stuff. I, I had a post stuff. about Final Cut X last week. Uh, How'd that work out for you? Uh, it's been interesting so far. Uh, my show was late. I wanted to listen on Wednesday. The show was late. Okay, there was a mishap as I I did not have I I did not have the workflow locked down. I apologize for that. Uh, we it will be better this week. I hope it will be better this week, or else better I better be, or else I might miss my bus. Yeah. So that miss has it. to be good this tonight. <laughs> so uh, so so go check out that I have a I have a running Google Plus thread where I've just been dumping my thoughts into, and maybe I'll do some updated uh, blogs off of that as notes. Uh, hey guys, we're here every Tuesday night live. Awesomecast.com awesomecast.com for all past episodes. Uh, drop us a line at contact at awesomecast.com seven two four two five a cast. Sorry, no, no, it's a different show. Uh, seven two four two five two 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 seven eight. Follow us on the Twitters at awesomecast on Facebook. Twitter. As you can see, we try to put some uh, questions out there, get some feedback, and we could read it on the show. Thank you to everybody in the chat room. You guys have been rocking it all night. Uh, this is. So for all the awesome cast crew, which AJ's already leaving, it looks like. Uh, <laughs> thank you for our awesome chat room. I'm sorry, you, I dropped a Dorito. I'm back. <laughs> Hi, you have been our awesome audience. We're having awesome Doritos. Have an awesome. See, you could have done a show. You know.
What's happening? I don't know. All right, let's start a show in five, four, three. Cream and pumpkin is not good after sitting in the fridge for like three weeks. No, no, pumpkin, can, dogfish head pumpkin can go a lot longer than cream and pumpkin. I'm glad I hit Yeah, yeah. But this is like, this is not quite, not feeling the way it should, I don't think. Still tasty, but not, not right. I had woodchuck's uh, pear cider last night. Yep. Delicious. That's nice stuff. It is. That's drunk apple juice right there. It, it is. Only pear. All right. Yep. All right. First of all, uh, Rob, was that your transform effect? <laughs> as I've yeah. seen in the chat room. But every child born in the 70s or 80s had their own personal transform sound effect that they were that was worked on for weeks. It was. All right, yeah. I mean, you made the noise whenever you made the you transformed them, right? You oh, have yeah, no idea absolutely. how many times I've walked around with a drill driver in each hand pretending to be a transformer. <laughs> oh yeah, me too. So what's your noise? Oh, what's your noise when you when you transform the or you know, in my case, go bots? <laughs> <laughs> Sorg was too broke for Transformers. I was, I was. I was. All mine, that. all my Transformers are from yard sales or the tiny bullshit ones, and uh, and they were missing like pieces, you know. And oh, they, oh yeah, you never had a. If you bought, if you were broke in the in, like late eighties, early nineties, and you wanted Transformers, you were buying them at a garage sale, and you never. I, got I cannot pool. lie, uh, AJ. You know how I pulled out the Q-Cat that one time? I could yeah. walk across the room and pull out a giant box of GoBots right now. Well, you do have Soundwave. Uh, yeah, you know what? I got that later, though. You know, that's some cool way, like, but you, you know, stuff like that. I think I paid like twelve bucks to get a get Rumble off of somebody at school. You know, because I'm uh, like, dude, I want some. How about Devastators going on eBay? All five uh, Constructicons are going on eBay for like 120 bucks right now. I got them. Holy shit, I got those are the ones I I could get because you could had to collect them and they weren't that much individually. You know. Right. Anyways, but let's, let's you got to have like all the pieces. And they all have to go together. That's the thing. Work. There's the bullshit extra pieces that they're the, like, yeah. oh, it's like an extra I gun. You don't have the head to devastate I guarantee it. You know, yeah, and nobody has all the guns for all the figures on that. I still see mm. them pop up in boxes here and there. 